Years in the making, an entire winter and spring of building up tour-worthy bikes, three months of map prep, all culminated the morning of August 5th, 2020, for three friends as we excitedly departed at 5 a.m. on our attempt at completing the tour of Idaho, a 10-day, 100% unassisted off-road trail ride from the Utah-Idaho border to Sundance Mountain in northern Idaho, just shy of the Canadian border. Ride along for day one of our adventure to vicariously experience some of the awesome country that we were able to see. Bye guys! Love you guys, see ya! The first segment of our route started just off the I-15 interstate south of Malad, Idaho. We backtracked slightly to the official tour of Idaho, which is a cattle guard straddling the Utah-Idaho border in what is known as Steel Canyon with a slightly inconspicuous red, white, and blue Tour of Idaho sign hanging from the fence. From there, we continued north through the Malad Range, eventually dropping off the east side, transitioning down through the valley, and then reconnecting to the south end of the Oxford Mountain Range. This is Barnett Canyon, which is the very first trail right off the interstate, headed up to the official start of the tour. Locking gates by the light of the moon. Okay, here we are at the official start. service road and go down and cross highway 36 so good start to the morning so far get some of those initial jitters out excitement we're all living off of no sleep because of all the anticipation of months and months and months of planning but super excited to be here riding all right we're just dropping into dry canyon the sun is just creeping up over there. It's about 5.54 in the morning. Uh, right up here is the Dry Canyon Campground. After crossing Highway 36, we resumed the trail on the south end of the Oxford Range. Our first optional bonus section started shortly thereafter. After completing the bonus section, we rode the ridgeline to the north, and enjoyed beautiful view of the sunrise to our east. We then dropped into Reuben Hollow and then ascended the Oxford Ridge to a short out and back hike to our next challenge point atop Oxford Peak. Okay, crossing Highway 36. This is where we just came from. Almost a full moon this morning. It's a beautiful morning. And we're going over here to the south end of the Oxford Range. And uh, we weren't originally going to do this. We've ridden it a couple times before. So we know what we're getting ourselves into. It's really a very easy trail. The issue is that the very last quarter mile top of the ridge is super gnarly.
This is the top of the uh, the bonus section or first bonus section that ties into the ridge line. And I just made it up to the top, just waiting for Charles and Brent. And it's a beautiful sunrise. And then we're going to head right north. Oxford Peak all the way over there in the distance. And then we'll be heading over there to the Bannock Range, which is just north of Malad. That's not a good sign. Brent's down there bench pressing his bike. Get on the steep part of that hill. Well, good. That's better than what Brett did. Well, what'd you do? <laughs> I dumped it downhill. Oh. Hey, guys, we're up one. Yeah, we are. All right, let's do it then. Nice work. Okay. Dropping into Reuben Hollow.
you have to climb the Oxford Peak. There's Oxford Peak over there. It's a beautiful morning. There's Oxford Peak. This is where you stop riding. Hike along this ridge over there. Just beginning our hike over to Oxford Peak. And believe it or not, we actually have some raindrops. It's not gonna do much of anything, but raindrops nonetheless. After enjoying the view atop Oxford Peak, we then backtracked and rode the eastern flank of the range, all the way to the north, until descending down the left fork of Cherry Creek, out New Canyon to the valley below. At this point, we transitioned from the Oxford Range to the Bannock Range, which is on the other side of the interstate, directly north of Malad, Idaho. back from uh, being out on top of Oxford Peak. We came down this two track over here. It's super steep. It would be very gnarly to climb back up and out. Uh, so there's this little single track that goes around. Technically we could have ridden that on our way out there too, but it's kind of, it's easy to miss going north, but this is where you want to pick it up coming backtracking.
heading west uh, down towards the Cherry Creek Campground. Then we'll pick up New Canyon, which is just dirt road. That'll take us out to the valley over towards Malad, where we make the transition from one range to the other. Right off the bat, we hit the West Elkhorn Single Track Trail, it skirts the western bench of the Bannock Range. Solo riders follow this all the way to the north end, whereas three and two-man teams divert up Kent's Canyon, where the trail then eventually splits again, with three-man teams continuing further north on even more single track. This segment ends after a really fun climb out of Kent's Canyon, topped off with the day's fourth challenge point at the summit. I'll get the one at Kent's. Okay. This is the West Elkhorn Trail around the west side of the Bannock Range, which is just north of Malad. And it's a good little single track. We were really fortunate right now because we've got cloud cover. I honestly was not really looking forward to this, thinking it was going to be 100 degrees and nasty but it's quite pleasant which is a welcome surprise and it's because of the cloud cover so we're going to take this up heading north until we intersect with Kent's Canyon Trail and we'll take that up and over the range Canyon right over there. We're going to be going up that. What you call cow water? I'm making the ride up Kent's Canyon.
gate's open, so I'm rolling.
The next segment continues down Kent's Canyon where three and two man teams split. Three man teams continue north for some additional single tracks, some of the best of the day, and then rejoin at the start of the fence line trail. continue on down to the campground and across the valley. Oh jeez. Well, that was good. That's what you get for not paying attention. And you can see the blaze on the trees. So that's what we're following. Along with a lot of cow poop.
rápida. The final section of trail in Bannock Range descends from the Elkhorn Crest and rejoins the two-man route on what is generally known as the Fence Line Trail. This trail continues north about 11 miles along the eastern slope of the boundary between Forest Service property and private property. This trail is deceptively long as well as taxing and at this point in the day when lunch is calling, it's important to remain very attentive. After the Fence Line Trail, the route meanders through a public right-of-way through farmland eventually doubling back south through the Marsh Valley, crossing the interstate west to east, past Downey, Idaho, and Highway 91. Okay, here we go. We just started the fence line single track, headed north. This is the last bit of trail on this range. Gotta rub the skull head for good luck. Good luck, Mr. Scully. This fence line trail, it's cool, but it just feels like it's really long. And I think it's a combination of a lot of things, the time of day, the fact that it's really, uh, I don't know, a lot of places is super skinny and overgrown at times. So it just requires a ton of concentration and I didn't. Um. Later, the bottom of my chain guide was tore down, and and I know I triple checked the clip, the direction, and everything. I guess I guess stuff happens. Quick stop for a drink, ice cream. We dodged a bullet with our most significant mechanical issue of the entire trip when Brent lost a master link towards the end of the fence line trail. Fortunately, he had the tools and the resources to fix it, and we were on our way. After a quick ice cream break at Downata Hot Springs, we headed north on a series of dirt roads and ATV trails up and over Cedric Peak, and then made the long descent down into Lava Hot Springs.
taking the climb up the Sedgwick Peak. And it's mostly just kind of a little deep road type of thing, but it starts getting nicer when you get up here further in the pines. cows too. Awesome. So that over there is the Oxfords. We went all across that range, across the valley, and then over there that's all the Bannock range, which is north of Malad. We did all of that. We kind of backtracked all across that valley. And up over here we're gonna drop down into lava, get some gas, and then try to go get some lunch. It's awesome. It's definitely warmed up today. We had some great temperatures earlier, but it's even hot up here, so I'm going to keep moving. Still a beautiful day. Alright, this is the descent down into lava. All the way. After a quick gas stop in lava, we were getting hungry and we could practically smell the burger and fries waiting for us at Little Rock Cafe in McCammon, Idaho. We still had some trail miles left to go as we rode the southwest portion of the Boundary Trail to McCammon. For those opting to ride the Day 1 Challenge section, you can pick it up just north of lava. It's definitely a good one, but having ridden it a month prior, we opted to alter our strategy, reduce some risk, and place a higher priority on other challenge sections throughout the tour. Sorry, I'm a hot mess. I was wondering why I was tasting gas. Oh. My vent cap. Yeah. So the challenge section uh, is just back there to the right. Stayed left here on this boundary trail. It takes you down around the west side. And if you continue the other way, it takes you on the challenge section. We rode that a month or so ago. Some really good, fun stuff, but there's some doozies too. And given the heat, different factors we figured there's no compelling reason to do that this early on so we've got some other higher prioritized challenge sections so we're gonna ride this and then the plan is to go into the cabin for lunch Need help? Yeah, I got my foot stuck. 
Okay, now I'm coming. There, I got it. Sure? Yeah, I couldn't turn it. <laughs> well, that was fun. There's a bunch of rocks here. Yeah, who put all the rocks here? I don't know. Yeah, that's not my favorite. No, this is gnarly. I wondered how Robert's wrist will be. Yeah, we'll be going up this stuff. I know it. Welcome to the Boundary Trail. After a delicious lunch at the Little Rock Cafe, it was time to tackle the rest of the Boundary Trail and Robber's Roost, and then on to Income Pass for our second to last challenge point. Encountered in the heat of the afternoon, after having ridden about 180 miles, Robber's Roost can prove to be a challenge in a few spots. Fortunately, we had little drama climbing the loose west-facing slope, aside from boiling gas in one of the bikes, and Boundary Trail will certainly give you your fill of rocks. We just had lunch at the uh, Little Rock Cafe in McCammon. It was super awesome. Totally recommend it if you can fit it into your schedule. Really good food. They were super excited to have us there. It was just exactly the kind of thing you, you wanted to be able to do and support on the Tour of Idaho. So now we're on the Boundary Trail and we're gonna head around to Robert's Roof, which should be interesting. Alright, here goes Robber's Roost.
temperature thing. I'll bet you. right there dropping down off the back side of Robert Bruce The final segment of the day took us from Incom Pass down our last great stretch of single track, the south fork of Inman Creek. Then down to the town of Incom where we crossed back over the interstate for a final few miles of ATV and Jeep roads atop Chinese Peak and then down to the flagpole, our final challenge point for the day. A large fire just a few weeks before resulted in a slight reroute in this area, but we still tried to enjoy our last few miles of the day as the sun was getting a bit lower in the sky. We were excited at the prospect of having day one complete and anxious for the long days ahead of us after a rest day in Pocatello. Well, we've got the flag pole again. Yep. Income pass. Say hi, guys. our last single track of the day. This is uh, Inman Creek.
Okay, this is uh, the reroute for the two and three man team that follows the solo route. That's the uh, Chinese Peak Fire a few weeks ago. Little ATV trail down in the Jolie. And then we're almost to the flagpole and calling it a day. It's quarter after seven. Chinese Peak and this is all recently burned just a few weeks ago. The flagpole is in sight, it's right down here at the bottom of the hill. Nice work, boys. Well done! <laughs> there we go. Hope to hit that field. <laughs> <laughs>